So here's my attempt at making a Kydex press. Um, basically, it's just a vacuform table. So I mean, I'm gonna be using it for other things as well, other materials other than, other than just Kydex. Um, notice that it's got holes. These are about every half inch apart. And um, I believe, yeah, they were 964 inch, just a, uh, if you everyone if everyone needs anything, but I measured out this line is basically the edge of the two before that's underneath, um, and you can see here this is a two before um, you know box basically uh, covered by um, plywood. The plywood is only about three let's see three sixteenths of an inch. So it's very thin stuff, but you can see it's got a lot of press to it, even with all the holes drilled into it. Um, so very, you know, very good platform. Um, what I did with the uh, aluminum channel, it's just C-channel, it's grouped together. These lines are just a reference, so I know which side goes with what. Um, and I can put it back together real easily. Um, but I put this on here um, as it's intended to go on. The first C-channel is actually flush with the top. Um, so if you look really close, you, you know, this is the height of, of the top C-channel. Um, so it's like two frames on one. Uh, they'll sandwich um, a silicone mat in place, uh, which I got on Amazon um, based on some other descriptions from other videos and such. Um, so it'll be sandwiched in here. And then I'll be able to just lay the Kydex on whatever um, instrument or, you know, in this case, a gun or mold or whatever will lay on top of here. Um, I can just put the Kydex right on top of it or the plastic or whatever um, and then put the frame down on it and the frame will keep the suction without having to waste a bunch of material. I want to use a, a 12 inch piece of material just for you know a 6 inch or 8 inch piece of work. Um, so it would be very you know uh, beneficial in that method in that manner. Um, I've also got a 1 inch hole here which I had to take a rasp and kind of file out on the inside, which is why it's not perfectly even, but this goes all the way inside. Um, that's where the vacuum hose would fit in. Um, that's my vacuum. You might need a bigger vacuum hose. Um, and then this is the plywood on the bottom also. Um, so this is just reference notes for me um, when I take to build this. You can also see that there's um, the aluminum uh, duct tape, not duct tape is in the sticky gray stuff we all love but uh, this shiny stuff here comes in a big roll um, so very easy to easy to manage keeps a good seal uh, basically I've got little like brad nails to go into this didn't need to be anything special this isn't going to be pulled apart this is basically going to be suctioned together so it's not going to take a lot of damage but I do have the nails probably every inch apart uh, going around this um, and then they're uh, taped over with this material uh, the aluminum tape to keep a really solid mark. If you notice, there's very little gap. I mean, you can see a little bit of, you know, light through that. Um, so uh, there is a little bit of a loss there. But you got to think, you've got an inch and a half of my material that's going to be suctioned down here as well before I actually get to my plate um, of, you know, active area where everything's going to be suctioned. So this will help seal in this area as well. So that little bit of loss of air is not a big deal. Um, shouldn't be a big deal. Of course, i got to test it. But uh, I'll let you know how that goes uh, later on in the video. Um, so pretty easy. And as far as keeping these two frames together, I'll probably just use like office clips to sandwich them. It doesn't have to be anything special, just enough to keep the silicone um, from going in all the way. Um, just has to keep it you know, tightly held between these two. Currently, I've got the tape on here because I use a... Um, two part, you know, JB Weld, if you don't know this stuff, don't watch my video. Um, so that's the quick set stuff, um, sets in about like six minutes or so. It is in the middle here, um, I'll, sh I'll put some pictures in the video as well um, of uh, what it looks like. But basically the tape's on here just sort of doesn't ooze out and sort of doesn't cause any problems um, with the, the movement of the, the molds themselves. Um, this tape here is basically just to keep it level um, with the top of the box. Um, if I was to redo this at all, 
I would cut these after I made my box. Um, I cut these first, um, so there's a little bit of unevenness, um, and I'm a bit of a perfectionist, but like one of the uh, things is probably like an eighth of an inch from the end of the you know from the edge of the other one. Make your box, you know, plywood box. Um, measure your aluminum after, cut it. Um, I used you know uh, 90 degree angles, not a 45. And you can see why in the pictures, but it's where a screw can go through um, from this side in, and then JB Weld on the back side of the screw, so the screw cannot back out. If the screw and the uh, metal, the aluminum in this case, are melded together with the JB Weld, then you know they're not moving. This frame is solid; it's not going to move. If it does warp a little bit, I don't care. It's you know it's C-channel, so it's going to you know resist a little bit of that. But uh, this was one of the best ways to do it that I saw. So recreating this and uh, I like the way it turned out. I ran a sander over this really quick and on the back side before I put the other piece of plywood on the bottom. Um, there's a lot of little burrs just from the drill bit you know digging through plywood and it chipping everything but I'm totally okay with this texture. It's not going to give me any splinters or anything and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's sucking air through it. So that's the press so far. Um, as soon as this dries couple hours I'll be able to put the uh, silicon in between and have a working uh, working press. So here it is after I pulled everything off. The flooring trim I had extra that's what I put around here just just to keep the frame from going too far down uh, when it's placed on. And as you can see I've labeled the frames this is the, the top front I've got marks on the side which correspond to these marks here just so I know where to put them. Here's my other frame. If I take, sorry, I'm doing all this one-handed. Uh, says bottom front. This is my front. So that goes like that. And it's a little snug on the fit, especially if you do one corner before the other one too soon. But there it fits. And notice the trim will not allow it to go down any further. Okay. Here you can also see the epoxy that I did, uh, the JB Weld, and you can see how the screws are in there. They're not coming out. Um, there's no flex in this. This thing's hard as steel. Um, there's a little bit of overlap, and you can see how putting the tape kept it from running you know, out around the corner. Um, it's actually kind of gone between the two sides um, very nicely. Uh, created a better joint, in my opinion. Um, so I'm very glad I did the tape. This is my silicone. Um, I'll put a link to it. I think it's like 120th or something like that, but I'll put the exact, exact up. Um, you can lay this out. You see this fits perfectly on the box. So no issues. The top of the frame goes in the front. Top the front. These all line up. And then I'm going to use just these little standard office clips. Um, basically they hook on the top and bottom of the C channels. There's going to be a ton of them around this because I want some, you know, good, good grab on this. Um, if I wanted to be, you know, a little more hardcore, I guess I could put like C clamps or something on this, but I've also made it to where I can't really get into that lip as much anymore with a, a good bite. These are a very good option. Um, so I'll finish putting those around and I'll be right back. So as you can see, I've placed the office clips in here. Um, you just take them and put them right there. I've got six on each side. Um, and technically, I don't need as many on the corners, so I can, you know, move these a little farther in. There's more, you know, tension, surface area, whatever, gripping on the corners. So I can take the time to actually move these more to the inside if I feel that that's needed. This is how you set it up. Of course, whenever I take this free, um, trying to... Okay, so whenever it's free, you'll notice that the silicone is, you know, encapsulated in the sheath. So I would put my, you know, my object down, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, I would, you know, set my material on top of it really quick and then put this on top. Of course, I would have two hands. Hey, there. Smile, no hands. Okay, so the silicone would be that. 
I stick my vacuum on here and suction down and the silicone would wrap really easily to material. Um, so I think this is a very, very nice way that I did this, that I ended up doing this. Of course, I researched this. Um, this is just all my findings all in one spot. Um, so let me hook the vacuum up and show you how that runs. Okay, so here I've got the shop back hooked up. Fits right in the hose, and the, uh, the hose fits right in the hole, so no problems there. And I'm going to flip it on real quick and you'll see how quick this works. You can see as it sucks down, um, creates a really good relief. Actually, I want to see that one more time. Even on the inside, um, there's very little room. I can easily press on this as I get uh, do this to get my, my seal just right. So I can actually push on that more as it's sucking to get my material to cup into the corners as I, as I needed it to. So I think this is perfect for, for what I wanted. Yes it's, a, yes, it's a smaller tray, but most of the materials you get are only 12 inches anyway, and you're gonna have a little bit of slop on each side. So in my opinion, this is perfect for what I needed.